And today's video is an update. <laughs> On this here 318. I got OEM points from Cummings or Cummins or however you say it from that place that sells the owning parts. These points with shipping and tax were almost $74. $60 just for the points. So we're going to go over on the bench and we're going to look at them. We're going to compare them to these cheap aftermarket ones. Then I'm going to install them. So there's the part number. And you can tell they're new. It's got that little QR code on there. So I looked all over to see where these were made. And I had to peel this up. Where it says, Origin United States. Because they had folded this sticker over. So they are U.S. made. So they say. And it's got some kind of little hologram sticker on here too. To let you know that it's Cummings. So let's see what we got here. They're wrapped in that paper to keep them from rusting and corroding. And they've got a little piece of paper between the contacts. Now look at them side by side. Now to me, the color of the metal and everything look just like these cheap Chinese ones that I bought three years ago. It's got this little retaining tab down at the bottom. The only thing I could tell that's different is the spring. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this off. This is the aftermarket ones I bought. And look at that spring. And then I'm going to take these Cummings ones off. I'm going to need the, uh, the Allen wrench for this. Okay, the spring seems to be a little taller. Now this still moves real hard, like this one. So the only difference I could I could think there is is the spring. So this is what I'm thinking. Say you're say you're you're changing the set of these points and you don't want to spend $75 for the new ones so what I would do is if you ended up buying the cheap ones if the ones you're replacing are the original OEM ones I would take the spring out of the old points and put them in the cheap points and another thing you might want to do is after you get the timing set you might want to uh, put some kind of thread locker on this bolt once you get it in place. Maybe put some uh, uh, Loctite on there, which we sell in our online store. We got Loctite. Or um, some super glue, crazy glue, maybe. Or even uh, fingernail polish. Wipe that on there, some paint, you know, to keep to keep that from moving on you. But that's the only difference that I can really tell on these points. 
Now, I don't want to have that thing go shoot across the shop. Spend the next hour trying to find these that spring. So I'm going to go ahead and install them. And then we're going to set the timing on it. And then I'll probably put some kind of thread locker on there this time. So there you go. There's your genuine Onan $75 set of points. It's ridiculous. Okay, I put this Welch plug back in. So what I did is it just fell out once I got the muffkin off. So I kind of flattened it out a little bit with a hammer. You don't want to flatten it too much because then it'll make it too big and you won't be able to get it back in there. So I flattened it out a little bit so it would fit in there kind of snug and then I tapped it in there. Now, it appeared to me that they, they punched it in the center to spread it out. When it was kind of dished around this side here, right in this area. So when I reinstalled it, you know, when I took it out, I flattened this, this den out for one. And then I kind of lightly hammered around it to flare it out until it fit in there snug. You know, I kept putting on a piece of, piece of steel and kind of hammered it and I kept test fitting it until it fit in there snug and then I lightly tapped it in there. Then I took this 7 8 socket because it fit pretty good right in there and then I tapped on that and that kind of spread it out and now it's in there tight. But one other thing I want to do is I want to put some black silicone around here and I'm going to use my black silicone that we sell in our online store and our tube gripper. So you might want to get one of these tube grippers because man it squeezes every ounce of that of that stuff out of there. So just as a, a just in case kind of precautionary thing I'm gonna seal it. Now I didn't want to put any sealer on the Welch plug when I stuck it in there because you know the cam bearing is back here and I didn't want any of that sealer to get on that cam bearing on the face of it or to get sucked in there so that's why I'm putting it on the outside to help seal it and plus when I go to put the muffkin and all that back on there that'll help hold it in place but that's why that Welch plug is there so when they machine it in the factory you know they can bore right through it plus it makes it easier to put that cam bearing in from the back in case you had to put a new cam bearing in and then they cover that hole with a Welch plug. Alright, so now we're ready to reinstall our points. And then we'll set the timing on it. You know, they got a point gap, but if you want to get it real accurate, you can use a timing light or you can use a, uh, a test light. But since we have that transdenser I put on there, that transdenser has its own built-in timing light. Now from what I understand, that Kirk Engines isn't selling these anymore. You have to contact Dale over there at Overnight Solutions. And I don't know if he's still selling them. Here's our little piece of paper just fell out to keep our contacts. clean plus we're going to clean them contacts anyway just tighten these down and then here's our wire that's coming from the transdenser but you're going to have your you know your condenser wire
Maybe I should have put the wire on first, huh? Let me turn it out some more. All right, there we go. And then there's a notch for that wire to go through. And I'll just put a little, little dab of silicone on that too. And go to put the cover back on. And then I'm gonna clean those points. I'll get a business card or a piece of paper Now they seem to be open pretty big right there. Let me turn it and see what, where we're at. Oh, there's the widest point right there. And that's closed. Oh, wrong side. Here we go. Let me close them up. So they want about 21 degrees of timing on this engine. So you could set the points. The rule of thumb is whatever the points are set at, that's what the timing is. So say you set them at 16 thousandths, it would be 16 degrees. 20 thousandths would be 20 degrees. They're calling for 20, 21 degrees. So you would set them at 21 thousandths would get you close. So through here, through this little window here, there's a mark on the flywheel. Let me find it. I probably went the wrong way. All right, Mr. Cameraman, you got it. Here it is. There's a line on here. So I marked it in white. And it's kind of close to this tooth. Let me get that flashlight so you can see down in there. So on the cover here, on the cover that covers the camshaft, there's marks on here. And we're going to show you what the front of that cover looks like. So this is 15 degrees. Let me get something. A little pointer. This is 15 degrees. And this is 20 degrees, I believe. Hold on. Let me get my phone out because I took a picture of one. There's a picture of one that's out in the junkyard. So you got a line here, a line here, and a line here. So I was wrong, 15 degrees. This is this line here would be 25 degrees. I'm sorry, this one here is 25. And that next one up from it would be 20. So we're gonna be right here at 21 degrees. Because there's 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So that's why I marked it right there. That's about 21 degrees. So you can put a, a, a timing light or a timing gun on here and start the engine and then take the Allen wrench and start turning the screw that adjusts the points. And then when that line that white line lines up with your line there with the timing light. That'll show that you got it in time. Another way to do it is with a continuity tester. 
or a test light. You can hook a test light up to here. One of these 12 volt test lights. You can do it two ways. You could hook it to the to the negative or the positive, and then you touch it to the points here. You know, you'd have to turn the key on. And then you turn the turn it. And then when that lines up with the mark there, depending on how you have this on there, you're, it's either going to light up or it's going to turn the light off. So since this has got a built-in timing light, I'm going to turn the key on. And there's our light. That's our timing light. Now you're going to have to get over there. Got it pretty close to there. And my Allen wrench. And it's not turning off. You know why? Because I did a bad job cleaning them points. So there's more crud on these points. A little piece of paper. They look like they're... They look like they got a pretty... Even though they were stored... In that special paper. Look like they might have been on the shelf for a while. Alright. I gotta clean them better. Use a piece of paper instead of that business card. They still look like they got some. Let me get a little carb spray. Spray a little carb cleaner on the, uh, or brake clean on the paper. I might have to use a points file on them. It's brand new. This space looks good. These other contacts, this other contact here, looks like it's got some corrosion on it. All right, I got some real fine 400 grit sandpaper. They're opening. Right there, it's closed. <clears throat> Turn this back on. I've got that timing mark lined up there. There we go, right there. So let me try this. Let me get that static timing light. Okay, I got them points real clean. And then I went back and checked my adjustment again with this. Now, I was going to hook my static timing light to it, but there's something wrong with it. It's broke. It's not working. I don't know if it's broke or if it has something to do with this transdenser being on there. But I couldn't get I couldn't get the strobe to work. It might just be the timing light's broke. So I abandoned that idea. Or like I said, you could use a test light or a continuity tester to do the same thing that this light does in this transdenser. So I'll turn the key on again. 
and the cameraman can come over here and you'll see I don't know if you can see the light if he can get both this and this in there at the same time but you'll see just as I get to that mark the light will come on see as soon as I rock it so that's where we want to be right there and now that I got the points open that looks to be about 20 thousandths. Let me get a feeler gauge. And see how close we came to that point setting. Let me find a 20 in here. Make sure it's nice and clean. And I put the muffin back on. Oh yeah. 20 thousandths. It's a tight 20. There's some drag on it. That's right where we're at. 20 thousandths. So, you don't want to mess around with all that. You know, trying to get the timing perfect. You could do it at 20 thousandths. Now, I went ahead and put the muffin and everything back on. Now that I shoved that feeler gauge in there. Let me clean these again. And we'll fire this thing up. The OEM points put in there. I'm gonna put some uh, some thread locker on there now to make sure that that doesn't move. Put the timing cover back on. So there's a little little update on this baby. So subscribe to this YouTube channel if you already haven't subscribed. Check out our web store. We got all kinds of stuff like this slipper shirt. You need to get a slipper shirt. If you're a fan, you gotta have a slipper shirt. If you like slippers, follow me, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Update video. <laughs>